What's going on guys? Joe with Odyssey Off-Road. We got a big upgrade here standing next to me. I got a big pile of uh, tires for the uh, Grizzly 700. So we take a closer look at those. Um, we're gonna get the factory wheels and tires off. Tomorrow I have an appointment at Discount Tire. They're gonna get these mounted up for me on the factory wheels. So we'll get a closer look. We'll do, uh, we'll get a scale out here. We'll weigh them, show you the differences in weight between the stock Zillas and then these here Tusk Megabytes. So let's get into it. All right, guys, what we got here are Tusk Megabytes from Rocky Mountain ATV. Now I ordered them in the factory size, which is 27 by 10 on for the 14 inch rims. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get these mounted up tomorrow. Uh, we're going to get the stock wheels and tires off and get them cleaned up and washed. They're kind of dirty from the last ride. I'm gonna, get a, I'm gonna get these on a scale. I'm gonna show you the weight of this tire without the rim. And then what we're gonna do is, uh, once we get the factory tires off the rims, we'll, we'll weigh those uh, unmounted as well and see what the weight difference is between the two tires. The factory ones I have on there, very little wear on them. So the, you know, they'll be fairly close to what they are when they come new from the factory. And then we'll, kind of, we'll weigh them with the wheel on, with the wheel off. We'll get me height measurements um, inflated to the same PSI, just where you can kind of get an idea if one tire is running true to size or the other one maybe is running a little bit smaller than the other. And we'll see. But let me get the camera here. We'll get a closer look at the tire. I'll kind of show you what the tread looks like up close. We'll talk about why I went with them. And then uh, we'll get down to start weighing these. So up close here, you can see the tires. They got a pretty nice tread pattern on them. Um, I live in southern Arizona, so it's a lot of rocky, desert, hard pack, um, but you get a lot of mix of like soft, loamy, sand, um, not too much wet or muddy conditions, you know, occasional puddle or uh, stream crossing when we get up into the mountains, but these, the factory Zillas, um, while a good tire, and I was actually impressed with how a tire with that open a tread pattern and you know really oriented more towards mud fared in the what I threw through at it um, it's still not the best tire choice for where I ride and and for general trail riding now these tusk megabytes have a nice tread pattern down the middle so you'll get a smooth ride on the hard pack you still have the big open voids here so if you get into some mud you're not gonna have to worry about them clogging up uh, they're gonna they're gonna grip the rocks pretty good. They're siped in the middle, so if it's wet and you're on pavement or wet rock, they're gonna allow the treads to open up a little bit and flex. Um, Sidewall protection is great on them. What I like, you know, you have this X pattern here, similar to Tusk Terabytes, which has a much it's a similar tread pattern. These Tusk Terabytes, but those tires tend to run a little more round. And we'll see how these look when we get them mounted up and aired up uh, if they round out a little bit more. But they're, they're fairly square and flat right now. And uh, the Tusk Terabytes, I've had those in the past. And they, they were a great tire. They lasted a long time. I got many miles out of them. Had them on a couple side-by-sides. They have a lot more tighter tread pattern um, on the side lugs and, and down the center as well. These are kind of like similar to that, but opened up and blocky. They're very similar to a Maxxis Carnivore. But the Maxxis Carnivore is a softer tread pattern, uh, tread compound, I should say, than these. The Maxxis Carnivores do wear fairly quickly if you're on a lot of um, pavement or hard rock surfaces. So, but they do grip well. So these here, you see the sidewalls. You got a lot of nice sidewall protection on them. And then this here even, um, the way they stepped the side lugs, it almost adds another surface of grip there. So if you're in a, in a rut or uh, kind of hanging on to the side of a, side of a rock, you know, you're trying to straddle a, a notch up, up going up a trail. They're really going to give you a lot of grip on the side as well. So I kind of like that. I like the um, fact that they're kind of they're kind of flat and wide. Um, give you a nice contact patch, especially in the rear. Give you a lot of grip. So these things should handle fairly well. They are a little bit heavier than the Zillas. Now, I don't know what the, the Zillas I've heard. I've never weighed them yet, but we'll know here when we're done doing what we're doing here in this video. But I've been told they weigh about 23 pounds uh, off the rim. So once I get them off the rim tomorrow, we'll weigh those and we'll see what they truly are. And then we're gonna, we'll get these weighed here today and we'll see what they weigh off the rim. 
And then we'll weigh them when they're on the rim, weigh those when they're on the rim. We'll kind of compare, see how much. We're definitely going to increase the weight per wheel and tire for sure with these. These are an eight ply also, so they're extremely puncture resistant. But with that, you're going to get some more weight. My main goal with the tire choice was longevity, um, to be able to handle a multitude of different terrain types and also um, something that's durable and it's going to get me home. So I think these will fit the bill nicely. There's very limited choice, as some of you may know, uh, who have an SE or an XTR Grizzly with these factory 14-inch wheels. There's just not a lot of 27 by 10, 14 tires out there. So this is an affordable option. Um, they have a good reputation. Uh, everybody I've talked to that's run these on side-by-sides and stuff, love them. So I figure we'll give them a shot here. They're about $107 a tire from Rocky Mountain ATV. And uh, if you order anything over $75 from Rocky Mountain, it's free shipping. So whatever the tax rate is in your where you live. So for me, um, I think the I ordered four tires, plus I ordered a jacket. Jacket was $40. Bucks. Um, and so everything shipped to my door was like $510, somewhere around that mark. So that, you can't beat that. The tires alone, you know, if you just... If I was just ordering the tires, it'd probably be about four fifty shipped to the door. So that's pretty good for a full set of tires, twenty-seven by tens on fourteen-inch wheels. As you know, when you get up to the size, things can get pricey. So let's get a scale out here. Let's weigh them, and then we'll also measure the height. Um, these are—it's not going to be a true test right now because these are not mounted or inflated. So we'll see tomorrow when they're mounted on the wheel what they what they measure up. But we'll measure them all. Off the rim, on the rim, and we'll, we'll kind of compare those two, similar to the weights, and uh, we'll see see what we got here at the end, what it looks like. All right, guys. So I got a scale out here in the garage. We get one of these tires put on. You see, it says zero. You see that there? 30, 30 pounds on the button. So, thirty pounds, one tire. So if Rumor has it that those are 23 pounds uh, without the rim. Then you're picking up about 7 pounds of tire. We'll see what they actually weigh, though, once we get them unmounted tomorrow. And then we'll do the same thing. So what we'll do now is we'll kind of get a measurement test. And we'll see how tall they sit off the rim. And then we'll see how tall the Zilla sit on the rim. And then tomorrow we'll do vice versa once we get the tire swapped. All right, guys, so I got it next to next to the Grizzly, next to the factory wheels and tires. So unmounted and uninflated off the rim to the top of the tread pattern. We're looking at about 24 and a half. Uh, maybe 24 and three quarters. Close to in the middle tread there. And then you can see the factory Zillas are a little bit taller mounted. Let's see what they measure actually though. So mounted, inflated, and with the weight on the, the machine on it, you're looking at about 20, eh, 25 and a quarter. So 25 and a quarter, and then 24 and three quarter. So... I don't know. It's going to be close, I think. I think they're going to be close to the same size once these are mounted and inflated. These have five, about five pounds of air in them right now. The Zillas do. And um, plus the weight of the machine on them. So let's get them off. We'll put them down on the ground on top of each other and see what they look like too. All right, so one thing, guys, I wanted to show you is before I take the other ones off, let's kind of show you width-wise how they, kind of how they sit. Now this angle, they look like they're wider, but I can tell you if you're standing over them, they're about the same sidewall to sidewall. So these might have a drop more sidewall budge, uh, bulge, but again, they're not mounted, so we'll know for sure once we get them mounted tomorrow. If it stays that way, that'd be nice because we have a little more sidewall protection. Um, the Zillas don't seem to have a recessed bead that much. Where these have a pretty deep recessed bead, so for the rim protection. 
So that might be nice. I guess, again, we're going to have to wait and see until we get them mounted tomorrow, how they look. And go from there. But they are side by side. I mean, you see the difference. And uh, let me get it rolled in front for you. So you can see also how it's going to look, kind of. I think it's going to look killer. I can't wait to get these things mounted tomorrow. It's going to look really good. I think they'll handle really good as well. So let's get these off, these wheels and tires off. I got to get everything off, get them cleaned up, get them thrown in the back of my truck so I can head up there tomorrow and drop them off. And um, we'll do a couple more measurements. All right, guys, so factory wheel and tire off as a package. We'll see what it weighs. This might be a little hard to weigh because these aren't square profile and it's going to be hard to get the tire to stay on the scale. So I'm just going to have to balance it with my pinky. And we'll get the best. Setting 41.2 pounds. Let's see if I can get this to stay. I cannot get it to stay. Let's see. Yeah, she doesn't want to stand up on her own just because of the profile of the tire. It's a little more round with just these big voids. It's not standing up on its own, but 41.2. So let's put her on the ground. You can see she's a little dusty. That's why we're going to get them washed up before we get these mounted on. And then plus two, I'm going to sell those Zillas. So that's why the guy that buys them, or gal, whoever, gets a nice uh, clean set. So kind of on top of each other here. Let's see if we can get them good and centered. Close as possible. They're really not that big a difference. Probably about a half inch there around. So maybe not even. And then you can see the profile difference. See how those are rounder and those are square. Now we'll see what happens once we get those new ones mounted on the wheels and they're inflated. They may round out a little bit and give a little more height. Either way, I don't think either one of these tires are true 27s. So if you want a true 27 inch tall tire, you're probably gonna have to go with like a 28 in, both, in either of these. Um, these are plenty big enough though for a Grizzly. I mean, you, you don't need bigger than that. It's not a twin cylinder 1000. You don't want to be sucking all the power out of it. Um, just upgrading the tires alone are going to add a couple of pounds. So going up in size, I think is going to add more weight than you really need. Um, these are going to be great. You got, the machine's got amazing ground clearance from the factory. You really don't need any bigger tires. Now, if you're just a pure mud guy, I get it. You're putting big mud, mud, mud boggers on it. But if you're a trail rider, you know, you want just a big enough tire that you need. You don't want too big to take away all your hill climbing ability and um, you know your power to be able to have fun with it and throw it around the corners and stuff like that. So I think these will work out great. Let's uh, get these things over to Discount Tire and get them uh, swapped out and then we'll see you guys here in a minute. All right guys, so we are back in the garage. Just got back from Discount Tire. Had the new tires mounted up and you can see they look awesome. Um, Shout out to Discount Tire in Tucson, Arizona, over up on uh, Irvington. They did a great job. I've used them before. And um, actually, when I was picking these up, the gentleman over there, Martin, said uh, he's actually a follower of the channel. So I appreciate that, Martin. Thanks for checking out the videos. And um, so he did tell me they had them set to like 15 PSI. So when I got home here, I lowered this one down to 5 so we're going to get a measurement at five pounds. Obviously, at five pounds, you're going to have the height of the tire is going to be different than when you're at 15 pounds. So if you're running these tires on a side-by-side, -side, I did measure them before I deflated them, and they were at about 27 and a quarter inches. So a true 27 um, at 15 pounds. So if you're running, if you're running them on a side-by-side, -side, you know, that's approximately the PSI you're going to run. You can expect these to be fairly true to size. At five pounds, they're going to drop significantly. I did measure them off camera, and they're at about 26 and a quarter. So I'll show you compared to now the Zilla that we took off. So if you remember, the Zilla was bigger when it was mounted, and now the Tusk is bigger mounted. The Zilla didn't shrink as much uh, unmounted as the Tusk does unmounted with no air that really blew up a lot if you remember 
it was a much flatter profile. It's still a pretty flat profile, but it was way flatter. Now it's got a very slight crown to it at five pounds. Um, so not, you know, true, true flat, but it's still a fairly flat tire, much more than so than the Zilla. When the Zilla has air in them, they're very round. You're kind of only riding on the center rib. So we're going to get these weighed with the wheel on them and see what the difference was. And I'll put up on the screen here the numbers of all the measurements when we're done. So we measured prior, we measured the Zillas on the factory wheels, and we measured these off. Now these, with no rim, were 30 pounds, and if I remember correctly, but I'll post it on the screen, those were 42.1 with the wheel. So let's see what the new tires are with the wheel, and then what the Zillas are with no wheel. All right, so we got the Zilla on the scale. 26.2 pounds. So we've gained 3.8 pounds per tire. Not that bad. Um, people had said that those were about 23 pounds, but obviously that's not the case. This is 26.2 pounds. So we're only picking up about 3.8 pounds. So that's nice. So let's get this sucker on there and then we'll just see if that's accurate. All right, there you have it. The new tires with the wheel 44.6. The I'll put this I'll put all the numbers up on the screen here right now. But so it looks like we only picked up about you know three pounds per tire and wheel. So that's a very pleasant surprise. I'm I'm thrilled with that. I didn't want to go much heavier, and this is actually a pleasant surprise. I thought I was gonna gain a lot more weight, but I didn't. And um, we actually picked up a little height also based on the measurements we have here. So that's awesome. Also, I'll put those measurements from uh, with the old tires mounted at 5 PSI and the new ones here on the screen for you as well. So what we'll do here next, we'll get all four mounted on the Grizzly. We'll see how she looks. All right, there she is. They're all mounted up. And I don't know, man, my first impressions are that looks amazing. But we'll see what do you guys think. I think it looks terrific. Um, it just looks mean. You know, with these tires on there. So we'll get a measurement with them now on the ground. Kind of give you guys a little side profile of it. They definitely sit flatter um, on the ground than the, than the Zillas did. So it's going to give you a lot more traction. You're going to get bigger contact patch on the ground than the Zillas, which kind of just rode in the middle rib of the tire. So for hard pack, this is going to be the ticket right here. And I, I do ride a lot of that and a lot of rocky terrain, a lot of rocks uh, that are just like, you know, like softball size rocks that are loose. And the Zillas just weren't good for that type of terrain because, you know, that middle rib on the Zillas right here, you know, in these big voids, when you're, when you're riding over uh, up trails that are, you know, loose rock that are like softball, baseball size rocks, they, the tires just can tend to kind of slide off of them and deflect, um, you know, in, with these big voids here. And you don't maintain traction as well. Now, you, you as you would with something that has better contact patch there. So now you can have more contact surface, you know, mating the ground uh, for those type of situations. And, you know, the Zillas are a great tire uh, for their intended purpose, which is, you know, light to moderate mud, um, wet conditions. I don't ride in any of that. And even if you do get into some light mud and wet conditions, these are gonna clean out fairly well, because look at, you know, you have some nice big voids here still. They're not gonna get all plugged up. Now, if you're just, you know, going through really thick mud all the time, and that's what you ride mostly, then the Zillas are for you. You know, stick with them. But if you're riding a lot of different types of terrain, um, you ride fast, you want a little bit more preciseness, um, more contact patch with the ground, you know, hard surfaces, these are, these are a better, better idea to go with something like that. Not necessarily even this tire, but something... Along those lines, um, a lot of guys will go with big horns too. They're a great tire. I considered those, 
but the Maxxis Bighorns are very expensive. Um, you can't get them in a 27 by 10. You can only go to a 28 by 10. And I just wasn't willing to pay that kind of money for a bighorn. I've had bighorns before on side-by-sides. And on those, I do not like the way they handle. They don't turn well. They just tend to push in the corners. They don't, they don't grab and turn. They just, um, there's a lot of understeer with those. So I wasn't con fully confident on how they would handle on, on an ATV, which is much lighter. They might be fine. A lot of guys run them and love them. So they'd probably be just fine, but I wasn't gonna, willing to spend that kind of money for those tires. Um, there's, there's the knockoff types that you can get, of course, but like I said earlier in the video, it's very hard to find a 27, 10, 14 tire. And um, this fit the bill, it was, the price was right, and they look terrific. I think they're gonna perform great. Let's get some measurements on the ground here. So mount it up on the ground, same way we did earlier. We're at about 25 and three quarters. So just shy of 26 inches. So I'll post it on the screen here. I don't remember what the measurements were with the Zillas on the uh, mounted. I wanna say they were fairly close to the same. I will say one thing I do notice is the bulge of the sidewall. You'll see that here. Uh, you got a little, more, a little bit more sidewall bulge. So you're gonna get a little more rim protection for sure with these tires, definitely. Um, than you will with the Zillas. The Zillas run fairly close and flat with the edge of the rim, so you're a little more prone to possible damage to the rim. And that's another reason you can't run a traditional staggered set of tires um, on these factory rims, because these are 8-inch wide rims, front and rear, on this machine from the factory. So if you go with a, say, 27 by 9 or a 26 by 9 up front, and 11 inch wide in the rear, you'll be fine in the back, but in the front, a nine inch wide tire on an eight inch wide rim, you're only gonna have a half inch um, on either side of the rim. You're gonna be a lot more prone to damaging your rims. So I wanted to stick with the factory size. This way you can rotate them too. Uh, these are a non-directional tire. You can, so that you can put them side to side and get even more life out of them as the lugs wear in one direction. You can, you know, flip them around, get the sharp side of the other end. So you can kind of crisscross when you rotate them and um, get you'll get a ton of life out of them that way. So that's great too. Um, these are also a radial tire, so they should ride a lot smoother than a bias ply tire does. So yeah, I think, I mean, I think it looks great. Another shot from the side there. Get another shot from the back. Let me move it out for you from the rear there. It's a little windy outside, so I don't want to film out there right now and get all the wind noise on camera. But you'll see how it pokes a little bit, just a tad. Pretty even with top edge of the fenders, maybe a half inch poke. What we can do is let me get a uh, total width measurement for you too. You know, total width of the machine uh, with the tires, new tires on there and see what we're at. Shouldn't be much different than stock. Alrighty, so we're about 49 inches. Yeah, just about 49 inches. So, pretty close to stock. I think stock was 40, 49 inches as well. That's in the rear. I don't think the front's any different. We could take a measurement in the front though too and check. Alright, so you see here in the front, about the same, about 49 inches. Maybe a, maybe a drop over 49 inches. So. Yeah, it looks great, I think. See a little bit of poke there. Sticks out past the fender just a tad on the top, but pretty even with the footwell. So you're not gonna get, you know, slathered in mud. I know some guys like to even run the over fenders. I do not. Um, I've had, I've gone through water and mud with this thing stock. Be interested to see how it, if this flings any more mud or water than stock tires did, but I didn't really get wet or muddy at all. Um, you'll get a little bit of splashing, you know, back here um, on the footwell, and maybe like into here, but your foot and leg in there is pretty well protected. You don't really get too dirty with this machine. If you're gonna run it wider than this, obviously maybe, you know, you want the over fenders, but I don't think it needs them. I don't think it looks good with them either. That's really not, I'm not really a fan. So there you go from the corner. 
And what I'm going to do is, I know you guys are going to want to know how they, they look great. The measurements are, are nice. Appreciate all that. But how do they perform? So we're going to do a first ride review on another video. Um, I'll get you guys hooked up to my helmet. We'll go out together, get some reactions, go to different types of terrain. We'll go through some soft, sandy stuff, do some loose rock stuff, and I'll give you my initial reactions on how it performs, high speed, um, and all that. And we'll compare. Then we'll stop and talk and compare. My, what it, well, I'll compare what I think is, you know, performance-wise, these versus the Zillas. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching this video. I hope this was pretty informative. I'm pretty pumped up. I think the Grizzly looks great. She's about ready for Hatfield McCoys. So if you don't know, I've mentioned it prior on social media. If you don't follow me there at Odyssey underscore Offroad on Instagram, you can follow me there as well. Um, we are going on uh, a, quite, a, quite a big trip. We're going to Hatfield McCoy Trail Systems in West Virginia. Um, we are going to be there May 18th through the 20th to ride. It's going to take us a couple of days to get there and a couple of days to get home. So we're going to be riding for three full days, maybe three and a half days of riding. And we're going to be hitting uh, Devil Lance Trails, uh, Rock House, and um, I, forget the, I forget the name of the other system there. Bear Wallow maybe or um, Bear Mountain, something like, something like that. There's three trail systems that connect right in that area. So we're going to be hitting all three of those. And um, if you guys are out that way on those dates, you know, hit me up. Get together, do a group ride maybe. And um, thanks for watching this video. I think the Grizzly's ready for that trip. We're going to get a, uh, we'll get an initial reaction, I think, to the tires. We'll, we'll get that uploaded before that. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you smash that subscribe button right now so you don't miss it. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out also. Hit that little bell so you get notifications for the next time I uh, post, upload a video. And thanks for watching this, guys. This one, guys. Get out there on your machines. Ride safe. And we'll see you on the next one.